Hi everyone and a warm welcome to Fun of Flying. In this video today I'll be showing you how to expand the capability of your home cockpit setup by significantly increasing the number of digital inputs available to your Leonardo microcontroller that otherwise wouldn't be there. Normally by using just one Leonardo you have the option of connecting up to a maximum of 20 digital input pins that can actually communicate in two directions i.e. inwards and outwards and the pin numbers for these are alpha 0 through alpha 5 on the one side of the microcontroller and 0 through 13 on the other side. Obviously for these digital pins to work as such they must be declared as being digital in the applicable Arduino sketch code that you load onto the microcontroller itself. Some of these same pins however can also be used for analog communication as well but these can only handle inbound signals and cannot communicate outwardly as is possible with the digital pins. The terminal numbers for these analog pins are alpha 0 through alpha 5 on one side of the microcontroller and 4, 6, 8, 9, 10 and 12 on the other side. Once again though, for these analog pins to work as such, they must be declared as being analog in the applicable Arduino sketch code loaded onto the microcontroller. You could of course mix and match with having some pin terminals being declared as digital and some being declared as analog, although in the case of the latter, the maximum number allowed is 12 and only then on the dedicated pin numbers that I've just referred to. Basically on the Leonardo, whichever combination you choose, be it digital or be it analog, you can't have more than 20 pin terminals available in total. And for clarification, you also can't have pin terminals on the microcontroller classed as digital and analog at the same time, or at least that's my understanding of it. Anyway, the whole point of this video is to show you how this current restriction of 20 uh, digital pin terminals on the Leonardo, which I'm classifying as inputs uh, for the sake of this exercise, can actually be increased by a whopping 60% to a maximum of 32 digital input pins. And I'm going to do that by connecting two 16 channel multiplexers to one single Leonardo microcontroller and then adding 32 external push buttons. Now in this case the Leonardo will be acting as a human interface device courtesy of the sketch code that I've written for it and as such it will then be instantly recognizable by Windows 10 and will also allow each of the 32 push buttons to be assigned individually within X-Plane 11 and also Microsoft 2020. It should be pointed out though that when I was writing the sketch code for this project I had to use something called the uh, HID project .h library which is one of the main parts of the sketch code that allows the Leonardo microcontroller to act as a human interface device in the first place. Unfortunately however it is this same library that actually restricts the total number of push buttons that can be used in conjunction with just one single Leonardo microcontroller to 32 and this may be the case due to restrictions within Windows 10 itself. So in theory then if this uh, push button restriction wasn't there then it may have been possible subject to the Leonardo's memory capacity to use even more multiplexers and even more push buttons although sadly I guess we'll never know. Anyway I'll be coming back to the sketch code a bit later but for the moment I just want to run through the theoretical wiring layout required in this case and to do that here we are in the lovely Fritzing software application once again and on the screen now you can see our, our main components starting down here with the uh, Leonardo microcontroller then we have these two devices here which are the um, 16 channel uh, multiplexers and up here of course we've got our 32 push buttons now to start this uh, wiring circuit we need to 
put uh, power and the ground uh, ground circuit to both of these multiplexers like so so we got a 5 volt supply going to terminal uh, which is described on the on the board here as VCC and then we've got our uh, ground cable going to a terminal called GND I think it is for ground literally that and having done that we can then start connecting up our serial communication wires and you'll notice that all of the serial communication wires from this multiplexer and this multiplexer all terminate to the same four uh, pin terminals on the Leonardo so those same four terminals there are handling communication traffic from two separate multiplexers so that seriously cuts down the number of terminals required on here to uh, to communicate with these devices so uh, we've got pin terminal 0 1 2 and 3 down here and each of those is, let's deal with the one from 0 at the moment terminal 0 the yellow one goes to pin terminal Sierra 0 on this multiplexer and Sierra 0 on this multiplexer the next one along uh, which I think is orange uh, goes to uh, pin terminal uh, Sierra 1 on that on that multiplexer and Sierra 1 on this one and the same applies for the other two terminals uh, from p uh, pin terminal 2 goes to Sierra 2 here and Sierra 2 here and the last one from pin terminal 3 on the Leonardo goes to Sierra 3 on the multiplexer on this side and Sierra 3 on the multiplexer on that side if you are going to attempt this project you must make sure that these serial cables here these four here here and here are all connected in the same way otherwise communication will fail the last uh, requirement for the um, multiplexers is to connect up what's called a signal cable so we've got this blue signal cable going from a terminal called SIG funnily enough and that goes down here to uh, pin terminal alpha zero on the microcontroller it doesn't have to be alpha zero it could be any one of these but I've just put it down here to try and separate it out and then from pin terminal alpha one we've got this green cable which goes to the SIG terminal on this multiplexer and I've put a couple of little labels there to help you understand exactly what I'm referring to uh, the next thing we need to do is uh, connect up our uh, ground terminals for each of these 32 uh, uh, push buttons. Um, in practical terms on the test board there's going to be an awful lot of wires here but as far as this theoretical drawing is concerned I've just tidied it up a lot by just putting one single uh, cable here connect, uh, connecting up all of the ground pin terminals as required. Now the important thing here is for all of these uh, they all must go through one way or the other a 220 ohm pull down resistor before going back to the ground terminal on the microcontroller. Then finally we need to connect up the other side of each of the push buttons and uh, individually each of these wires go through to the uh, terminals on this side of the multiplexer here which are labeled Charlie 0 through Charlie 15 or channel 0 to, through to channel 15 and the same on this multiplexer over this side so I'll call this multiplexer 1 and this is multiplexer 2 so there's an awful lot of uh, wires uh, going to be used on the test board here for all of that but in theory that's how it all works so I've put a little label here again uh, to show you what I'm referring to so hopefully you'll understand in a bit more detail okay so that's that for now um, what, get, what we're going to do now is to go and have a look at the actual test board um, which has got a little bit larger uh, since you last saw it um, and that's primarily due to the projects that I'm now working on which are much larger in scale okay so we'll see you over there okay so here we are um, clearly the board has got um, quite a bit bigger than it was previously and that's because I'm getting involved in projects now that require uh, significantly more hardware um, but for the purposes of this exercise you can ignore these two megas here this is a spare Leonardo 
and they've got a noon over there which I'm not using and clearly those slider potentiometers are not part of this project either uh, and neither is that five uh, five inch HDMI screen which I'm going to be looking at in uh, projects coming up soon so I've taken uh, photographs from all angles so you can see it a bit more clearly so now we go on to the uh, wiring side of things uh, this is the Leonardo that we're dealing with on this occasion so we've got uh, over there you can just about make it out we've got a 5 volt supply and a ground cable going across to my power on board and from there across to my distribution board and from here we've got um, two um, uh, 5 volt supplies going across to power up the the uh, two 16 channel multiplexers and I've also got two ground wires going across uh, to those uh, multiplexers as well now um, I think I've mentioned already that uh, using um, if you're using one multiplexer uh, you need to have uh, four serial communication wires connected up back to the microcontroller if you're using two multiplexers or even more then you can still use uh, the same four terminals um, the question is how do you connect up two multiplexers resulting in eight cables going across to just four pin terminals and I've overcome that by making this little serial communication board where I can pick up um, uh, or share the same the same uh, route back to the microcontroller so underneath here uh, is a is a copper strip board and I've soldered it up I've soldered all these pin headers on here uh, just to give you an example this one in the corner is connected to that one that one that one that one that one and that one and so on each one each of these root that way they're not connected to each other sideways they're only connected to each other down the copper strip in that direction so that the yellow cable here on this pin is connected to the plug in front of it where the where there is another yellow cable and so on this brown one is connected to the brown one in front of it so the co connectivity is this way so that and this board enables me to share those four terminals without having to uh, try and join in extra wires into these plugs it's much neater uh, doing it this way so we've got our serial communication cables going across here to this board and then I pick up those same uh, uh, cables or same connections from two places in here and in front and all of those or one set of four cables goes to multiplexer one and the other set of four cables goes to multiplexer two so you've got two multiplexers communicating through eight wires down to four wires and then back to the uh, pin set terminal numbers that we've allocated in the um, sketch code right now things start getting a bit messy uh, oh sorry now I have forgotten something see these blue and uh, green wires they're the signal cables that come from the multiplexers green one comes over here to this one which is multiplexer 2 and the blue one comes from multiplexer uh, one and they both go back to uh, pin terminals uh, alpha zero and alpha one which are set up as uh, digital inputs on the microcontroller itself now on the other side of each microcontroller you've got 16 uh, cables plugged into one and 16 cables plugged into the other and they of course are all going off to each of the 32 push buttons that you can just about make out in there and what makes it even messier still uh, if that wasn't enough is of course you have got um, you've got to find a ground return for each of those 32 push buttons back to the microcontroller uh, I defy anybody to uh, try and connect 32 32 black ground cables back to this directly so uh, what I've had to come up with is a ground uh, terminal collect, uh, collection board if you like and because each of these uh, three, uh, or the ground returns need to go through a 220 ohm resistor I've had to uh, solder in some here so just by way of explanation this is another uh, copper strip board 
excuse me and I've uh, soldered some female pin headers on here so that all of the pin terminals in this header are all connected together and go through that 20, 220 ohm resistor back to this one and same for that book that strip and that strip and that strip they all got 220 ohm resistors on this one doesn't have a 20 ohm, uh, 220 ohm resistor on it because uh, I wanted to leave one free of resistors in case I needed to do it uh, I needed to get a ground t uh, circuit done in another way but anyway so <coughs> from each of these resistors it, this one goes to this pin terminal on the end and there's a cable in there and that goes back to my distribution board and from there that goes back to the ground pin on the microcontroller for this female header here you've got another uh, 220 ohm resistor you can just make out which goes back to another pin in here and that's collected by another cable uh, back to here and back to the microcontroller and you can see that there are four uh, black uh, ground cables going across um, and they're picking up this bunch of uh, ground cables this bunch of ground cables this bunch of ground cables and that one uh, if I had any cables in there it would pick up that one uh, sorry this one oh it has yeah yeah okay we're, we're okay so that one that one that one and that one 32 ground cables all going back uh, and condensed down to four cables then down to one cable back to the Leonardo sorry if that's as clear as mud um, when you're dealing with that many push buttons uh, unfortunately the wiring gets a bit serious but uh, that should give you an idea and just uh, for something for you to remember for later um, the way I've wired up these push buttons to the multiplexers um, is in uh, sort of rows of four so over this side is for multiplexer one and over this side is for multiplexer two and when i check this later in windows you'll you'll know which way i'm or which buttons i'm pressing and why uh, or in which and in which order sorry so we've got push buttons one to four here five to eight nine to twelve thirteen to sixteen on multiplexer one and then 17 to 20, 21 to 24, 25 to 28, 29 to 32 on multiplexer 2. So when checking in Windows, I'm just going to press this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, and so on. And you should see the little red lights illuminate um, in the Windows control panel, devices and printers section as I press each one okay hopefully that makes sense um, so I think that's probably what we're going to go and do now okay see you in a sec okay so here we are in uh, Windows 10 control panel um, we want to go to hardware and sound and then devices and printers and we're hopefully going to find our Arduino Leonardo gamepad uh, icon here which we have so we right click that, click on game controller settings, there's our Leonardo connected up, status OK, so that's good. Then we left click properties here and we should hopefully see uh, 32 um, red buttons which represent our 32 push buttons on the um, test board. And there they all are. So you can ignore all this, uh, I'm not using any potentiometers for axis control, uh, I'm not using any hat switches, it's just these uh, 32 uh, push buttons uh, that we're interested in here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press each of them in the order that I've uh, just showed you um, and hopefully uh, each, each of these will light up. So I'll move my cursor out the way. So uh, you should see a little uh, video inlay of me pressing each of these buttons um, uh, as the as the lights uh, come on. So here we are. I'm going to press uh, push, push button number one, and number one illuminates. That's good. We we'll do two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 
13, 14, 15 and 16 and all of those are uh, all of those push buttons are going through multiplexer number one so let me go over here to uh, multiplexer or, or the push buttons for multiplexer number two um, the second group of 16 so 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 nearly finished 25 26 27 28 and lastly 29 30 31 and 32 and they're all good so that's excellent so now that we know that all of these illuminate we now know that our wiring for our 32 push buttons is correct uh, everything is working through the uh, multiplexers and back to the Leonardo as it should and what we should be able to do next is to go into uh, Microsoft uh, 2020 or X-Plane 11 and we should be able to freely assign each of these buttons as required uh, in those programs. Before we do that however um, we need to go and have a look at the uh, sketch code that goes along with all of this so I'm going to shut all this down now finish with that and we go over to the uh, Arduino IDE uh, desktop program and we'll start having a look at the code that makes everything work okay so see you in a second okay so this is the start of our um, sketch code for this project um, there is an awful lot of it but don't, don't get uh, too spooked by that because a lot of what you're going to see is more or less duplicates of the same thing over and over and over again um, where uh, we're using similar codes for all of the 32 push buttons involved um, but I'll come on to that in a minute the, um, the first thing we need to do is to um, use two libraries um, one called a mux.h library and the other the hid or hid-project.h library um, the mux library can be uh, obtained from the github repository at the address shown and the other one the hid project library can actually be downloaded from the arduino website um, the first one um, facilit facilitates the use of multiplexers in the code um, and the second one actually is responsible for uh, converting the Leonardo microcontroller into a human interface device. This uh, little bit of code here um, is something called a namespace. Uh, the, the name is Admux. Um, it doesn't mean an awful lot here, um, but if we were using a lot of libraries with similar content, um, then this would differentiate uh, the one uh, relating to the mux.h library it's just to avoid conflicts um, with naming regimes in in uh, when you're using multiple libraries which we're not but we still have to use it now we come down to um, the creation of two mux uh, sessions or multiplexer sessions and the first bit uh, is the name of the MUX or the multiplexer. So we've got multiplexer one and multiplexer two. The uh, pin numbers alpha zero and alpha one are where the um, signal cables go from the multiplexer back to the Leonardo microcontroller. And we're declaring those particular pin terminals as inputs and uh, digital inputs and we're also using the integral um, uh, pull-up resistor on board the microcontroller itself. Then we have the pin sets uh, which are the terminals on the microcontroller where the four serial communication wires go from each uh, of the multiplexers and you'll note that they're both the same uh, pin terminal 0, 1, 2 and 3 and the interesting thing about this is that no matter how many uh, multiplexers you use um, in this particular type of setup then they can all be channeled back through to the same four uh, pin terminals on the Leonardo so that as I think I said before does save quite a bit of space uh, when you're using multiplexers so now this is where it starts getting a bit wordy 
and as I said before don't worry about it um, if you just look at the top two lines to start with we're dealing with uh, push button one on multiplexer one and we're set simply setting up uh, memory uh, for a couple of integers uh, which uh, log the current state of push button one on multiplexer one and the previous state of it um, and then you simply repeat that process uh, by doing the rest of the um, 16 uh, push buttons on multiplexer one and the only thing you need to be careful of if you're copy and pasting all of this down here is that you have to change the number of the button in each case so we've got one there two there three there four there and so on all the way down to 16 and all of those are on multiplexer one and all of them are given an initial value of zero then we come down to uh, all of the buttons that I've connected to multiplexer two so it says up here button one on multiplexer two so integers for the current state of that push button uh, ie a high or low voltage and the previous uh, state of uh, button one on max two ie a high or low voltage and so that's what you, you do that for the first button and then you simply repeat that for the following or the rest of the 16 push buttons that are linked to multiplexer 2 in this case and again you need to be careful that you change the button numbers as you go down so start with 1 then 2 then 3 and then 4 and so on then we come down to the uh, void setup and as you can see there's no content there because none is needed so that makes life a little bit easier then we come down to the void loop and this again is very wordy but as I've said before it's very repetitive also um, what we have here uh, is commands to search through the 16 channels on the multiplexer and we're confining it to looking at uh, channel 0 in this case now the channels on the multiplexers are zero indexed so they all start with a channel zero and finish with a channel 15 they don't go 1 to 16 it's 0 to 15 so we're basically asking the uh, in this loop we're asking the program to look at mux 1 and channel 0 and I'm confining it to channel 0 by putting this little command here uh, don't go any further than less than one so essentially that's uh, channel zero only and read that terminal uh, to see whether there is a high or low voltage um, and also whether the current state uh, of that uh, terminal or that button is different from the last state that was recorded in the previous loop around the instructions so if there is a low voltage um, and also that voltage is different from the last time it looked then uh, issue uh, this instruction here gamepad press 1 otherwise if the voltage is high then release uh, gamepad release button 1 and then right at the end and that sorry and then the gamepad dot right that writes it to windows um, a basically an on or off signal and then right at the end here uh, it equalizes the situation to prevent repetitive uh, presses of the button unnecessarily following that you do exactly the same uh, for uh, the rest of the channels of the multiplexer or, or multiplexer 1 which is channels 1 to 15 we've already done channel 0 that I just showed you uh, so that's channels 1 to 15 to do for buttons 2 to 16 on mux one or multiplexer one and you also go through the whole process process again uh, for channels 0 to 15 and buttons 1 to 16 on multiplexer 2 uh, and that's as much as you need to do um, if you're going to copy and paste these instructions and you need to change a few things each time you do 
um, for uh, we're on multiplexer um, one here still but we're on button two now that's going to sound confusing because what we're asking the program to do is to check channel one on the multiplexer remember that channels on multiplexers are zero uh, indexed so they start with zero so um, the second one is actually number one and not number two so it's so uh, we're saying right read number uh, read channel one for button number two and we go through the same process again so if you're going to copy and paste this information you need to change this and this to look for a different channel you need to change the button number and uh, you do it there 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 and down here as well then you go down and do the next one you change this information up here so you're looking now looking at channel two which is for button three yes confusing um, and we're now now have to change uh, the button number down here 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 and here and we do the same thing all the way down uh, until you're finished with all 16 buttons on both uh, multiplexes uh, a lot of work yes granted but it is quite repetitive you just need to remember to change those few bits of information each time you copy and paste down okay so that really is it for the um, he says uh, <laughs> um, but that's that's all you need to do for this particular program and uh, the next thing we'll go and do is to test this um, remembering that we're dealing with a, a Leonardo microcontroller that's been set up courtesy courtesy of the library the hid uh, dot, uh, dash project library uh, the microcontroller is being set up as a HID device directly recognizable recognizable sorry by Windows 10 and ultimately therefore uh, Xplain 11 and Microsoft 2020 and possibly other uh, simulators as well okay so our first test is going to be in Xplain 11 and I've just loaded a basic uh, Cessna Skyhawk 172 aircraft um, if I go up here to settings um, and joystick settings in particular uh, we're not doing anything with a keyboard on this occasion um, here it's got uncalibrated device because it's recognized the Leonardo connected to it um, and it's saying it should be calibrated but as I said before uh, we're not using potentiometers or anything like that so there is no need for us to calibrate anything uh, in this particular setup now what we're interested in is over here uh, we're looking for all of our uh, 32 buttons uh, push buttons that we set up uh, in the code and here they all are now these buttons inside X-Plane here button 0 uh, that's because the buttons in X-Plane are 0 indexed similar to the channel numbers on the multiplexers um, so uh, when you're looking at button 0 we're actually uh, considering it to be button 1 on the test board but no matter um, what we want to do is to calibrate each of these buttons um, and I haven't calibrated all 32 buttons because uh, we'll be here forever and a day but what I've done is I've calibrated these ones here uh, six of them um, and all of those buttons are going through multiplexer number one and then further down I've calibrated these ones down here uh, which all go through um, multiplexer number two and you'll note that I've calibrated uh, toggle switches in the aircraft and yes you can use external push buttons to control toggle switches in the simulator um, it's just as easy as having an external toggle switch um, but uh, I'll show you how that works in a bit so those are the ones we're interested in looking at and those are the ones we'll be testing for the purposes of this video here multiplexer 2 this slot multiplexer 1 over here okay so we'll dismiss that and we'll go to the aircraft and we'll set it up ready for us to push uh, the buttons on our test board to see if everything works as it should okay so we'll uh, just dismiss 
the yoke here so we can see what's going on behind and I'm going to move the cursor up there out the way and I'm going to start pressing the button so hopefully you'll see it in the video overlay um, me actually pressing the button to the and and then seeing the corresponding switch in the aircraft operate so button number one which is battery master button number two is alternator and you can turn these on and off by pressing them like so so this is this is the difference between a toggle switch and a push button you press this twice once for on once for off uh, in a toggle switch of course you flick it up once and flick it down but these work slightly differently so uh, push button number three is fuel pump number four beacon lights number five landing lights and number six taxi lights and you can turn them all off again at will now that was all going through uh, those are the, those push buttons are all going through multiplexer number one so if we go over to this side uh, we've got multiplexer number two and the push buttons attached to that so we've got nav lights strobe lights pitot heat avionics bus one avionics two and then I've even set two push buttons up um, for the flaps control so this one uh, extends the flaps like so and this one retracts the flaps one uh, section at a time okay so if we go back through those we can turn everything off again off 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 and these ones off 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 and that's that okay so that all seems to work um, and I'm absolutely confident that the rest of the 32 push buttons in this setup will work equally as well so now what we're going to do is to go over to Microsoft 2020 and do exactly the same thing there and uh, see how that uh, goes all right see you in a second okay so here we are now in uh, Microsoft 2020 and I've again loaded a Cessna 172 aircraft and you can see here where I have already assigned uh, some of my push buttons on my test board to some of the operations inside the cockpit again I've just uh, um, chosen uh, six push buttons from go that are going through multiplexer one and another six also going through multiplexer two and uh, these are the uh, button numbers here okay so if we go to uh, back to the aircraft resume and look down here get rid of the yoke right so I'm going to just do the same thing again I'm going to press uh, button 1 which is battery master 2 alternator 3 fuel pump 4 beacon lights 5 landing oh, landing lights and 6 taxi lights so that was all the push buttons going through multiplexer one if you go over this side i'm going to, going to uh, press uh, six buttons through multiplexer two now so we've got nav strobe pitot heat avionics uh, they work differently in uh, x-plane so we've got flaps uh, extended like that and flex flaps retracted using this button I don't think I did another one no so I just did those six so you can clearly see that it works and once again uh, although I haven't assigned all 32 buttons I'm absolutely confident that all 32 buttons will work as uh, I've just shown you for the ones that I have assigned and also I haven't tested this thoroughly yet but I'm pretty sure that uh, this setup where the Leonardo is acting as a hid device or any of the other setups that I've done where the Leonardo is acting as a hid device uh, will work in other simulators I'm pretty sure it will work in DCS and Elite Dangerous and probably others as well but um, I'll come back to you in the future about that because I haven't tested it thoroughly enough okay so uh, that's it for now we'll um, have a few closing remarks and uh, bring the video to an end okay see you in a minute 
okay so before we wrap this video up completely um, there is one other thing that I wanted to have a chat with you about uh, and for that we need to have another look at the Leonardo microcontroller so you'll be aware now um, that by connecting up two uh, 16 channel multiplexes to this one Leonardo microcontroller only uses up four uh, four pin terminals so we've got terminal 0 through to 3 here which are the serial communication uh, connections to both uh, to both multiplexers and then down here we've got the signal cables coming from or one from each of the multiplexers down here to alpha 0 and alpha 1 but what about all these other ones here uh, 4 through 13 or alpha 2 through our, uh, alpha 5 what can we do with those well you'll be pleased to know that you can also use those um, for even further uh, inputs you can't use them as part of the HID or the human interface device um, program or the sketch code because the maximum number of push buttons or inputs that you can use in that setup is 32 and that's either a restriction in the HID project library that I've used or more likely a restriction with Windows 10 itself but having said that the, the most you can have with a hidden device is 32 inputs and we've used all those through these two multiplexers here but you can still use these other ones you can set them up as uh, digital inputs uh, connected to other push buttons or tool switches whichever you like uh, it's just that the code to operate those uh, is going to be different from the code that I've just shown in shown you in this video I have written code for th that would work with these no problem at all um, and instead um, what's happening with those instead of sending pulses or information to Windows directly these ones will be responsible for sending uh, in conjunction with the code of course they'll be sending keyboard commands directly uh, to uh, X Plane 11 or uh, Microsoft 2020, um, which is different from these ones, which are sending, which is sending information directly to Windows, which X Plane and Microsoft 2020 pick up on. But you still got these additional 14 here uh, on top of the 32 that we're using in the other format, so that's 46. And there's nothing to say that you couldn't actually put additional multiplexers in um, as well um, which will give you uh, X number of um, uh, of additional inputs um, the only restriction is going to be on the Leonardo itself in terms of its memory and just how much code it can cope with but anyway I just thought I'd point that out because I didn't want you to go away thinking that these other pin number these uh, pin terminals here are all wasted because they're not you can still be used it's just a different uh, type of code is required to make them work okay um, I'll leave you with that thought and uh, we'll um, finish off okay then so there we have it another idea for you to try at your leisure and of course if you have any questions please let me know and I'll see what I can do to assist you um, if you like the video um, and you found it of interest then please smash the like button and also don't forget to smash the subscribe uh, button and the bell so that you don't uh, miss anything going forward so uh, thanks for watching and uh, ta-ta for now